Welcome back. The last video is on health risk management. This is the fourth video on toxicology, environmental health, and health risk management. After talking about the chemicals and their health impacts, the key concept in the introduction to environmental science is to discuss how we manage major health risks or chronic effects of these food additives and trace organics and metal contaminations. It seems to us that these chemicals are unavoidable. The question is, how are we going to deal with them? The second question is what toxicological endpoint we are addressing. Usually, the endpoint is cancer. But how are we going to estimate the exposure? What concept do we have in our mind to control the chemicals involved? There was a congressman called James Delaney in the U.S. Congress proposing the concept of zero tolerance in the amendment of his famous Delaney Clause in 1958. The Delaney Clause was a provision in the amendment which said that if a substance <clears throat> was found to cause cancer in man or animal, then it could not be used as a food additive. That stirred up much debate as we used such zero tolerance. Low foods could be sold or could we test all the foods? Would zero be the detection limits? Another easier or more practical concept of de minimis. Using the ability to deal with foods is a feasible and workable mechanism. Still, we need to characterize and test the chemicals with those response tests in animals. Another issue of modern toxicology research or risk management is how do we deal with chemical mixtures? <clears throat> For example, dioxins and dioxin light compounds, they have similar structures and different toxicity scales. They exit together with the complex mixtures of congeners of dioxins, PCBs, furans, etc. We have studied the comparative toxicology of these compounds, and with the help of molecular toxicology, we study their receptor, known as H receptor or a radiocarbon receptor. To simply do the risk assessment and regulation of these chemicals, we introduce the concept of toxic equivalency factor, TEF, with a value of one set to 2378 TCDD, which is the most toxic or potent form ever identified. <clears throat> we hence can combine PCBs, furans, and dioxins together to add up as TEQ, toxic equivalency quotient. We could thus collectively adding them up with different concentration and the limit say, set as 4 times 10 to minus 12 gram TEQ per kilogram body weight as the limit of our body burden. This table lists TEF values from 0 0.0001 to 1 of TCDD and various dibenzo p dioxins and dibenzo furans to build up the TEQ formula in the next slide. TEQ equals to the concentration of PCDD times TEF plus the concentration of PCDF times TEF plus the concentration of PCBs times TEF is the formula. But what chemicals could and should be included? This is said by WHO World Health Organization. You can click into the link for details. The criteria for including a compound in the TEF scheme for dioxin-like compounds, one, shows a structural relationship to the PCDD and PCDFs, two, bind to the H receptor, HR3, elicit HR-mediated biochemical and toxic responses, and be persistent and accumulate in the food chain. So PCDD, PCDF, and some PCBs are included. Here is an example of PCDDs and PCDFs for 
Canadian adults with different foods consumed, estimated amount per day per person, detected toxins and toxin-like compounds, as shown in TEQs, calculated by adding all PCDDs and PCDF together to estimate the amount of toxins and toxin-like compounds from different foods. We thus could see and determine that beef and milk products are at high risk to us. The total daily toxins intake was estimated as 1.52 picogram TEQ per kilogram body weight. WHO now has a TDI tolerable daily intake estimated as 1 to 4 picogram TEQ per kilogram per body weight per day. Upper limit set as 4. Best if we all can control this down to below 1. Problems with the TEQs and TEF values are the fact that data were extrapolated from mouse, not human. So far, however, this remains the most feasible approach for risk assessment purposes. There's no absolutely there's no absolute figures to all of us saying which level could cause diseases. There are also long additives or long additives interactions my hamper to use TEF values. A recent study from the Center of Food Safety CFS in Hong Kong estimated our body burden of dioxins and dioxin-like compounds as 21.92 picogram TEQ per kilogram body weight per month. So per day, this is less than one, or around 0 0.67 picogram TEQ per kilogram per day. Just fit the WHO standard of 1 to, two, 1 to 4 picogram per kilogram per day. However, if you look, if you look into the high consumers, they are up to 59.65 picogram TEQ per kilogram per month, around 2 picogram per kilogram per day, still within the WHO recommended range of 1 to 4. Comparing with other countries, we are higher than people in US and Australia, but lower than Japanese, Chinese, and Europeans. For metal intoxications, we control them one by one with this Public Health and Municipal Services Ordinance CAP 132, Food Alteration Metallic Contamination Regulations. Different food type may have different limits of maximum permitted concentrations. For instance, arsenic in liquid is 0 0.14 ppm, 6 ppm for fish, 10 for shellfish, cadmium, 2 ppm for seafood, 0 0.1 for cereals and vegetables, 0 0.2 for meat. Lead is 6 ppm in solid, 1 ppm in liquid, mercury all in 0 0.5 ppm. Chromium is set as 1 ppm for any food types. If the food items found to exceed such limits, will be banned to be sold in and removed from the market. To conclude, <clears throat> I have the following points to remind you. One, the golden rule. Remember, the dose makes the poison. Two, risk management or assessment is important to safeguard us from chronic diseases like cancer. We use the concept of de minimis, not zero tolerance. Guidelines and safety limits are study in a research area of regulatory toxicology. Mass data analysis are needed in involving human cohorts and food samples to protect us. <clears throat> Finally, balancing risks and benefits is not easy. Seafood is nutritive but contain chemical pollutants. My final advice is having a balanced diet with regular exercise is important to good health. Goodbye. Thank you for watching.